Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at whether it's week's 10 days in today's video. This will take us to around the 20th of um, September. So we're going to the second half of the month with this uh, update. We'll begin by having a look at what's happening in the tropical Atlantic. Of course, Hurricane Irma has brought devastating weather to Florida. It's pushing into northern Florida now and weakening very rapidly. But it is still bringing... Uh, some really nasty weather to central and parts of Florida. So have a look at that. Uh, and at the end of the video, if you have time, we'll have a quick look at CFSB2. But the winter, because I haven't shown you that for a little while, I'll show you what the latest from the CFSB2 is. Winter of 2017, 2018. But we'll begin by having a look at the tropics. So this is the latest in the tropical Atlantic Ocean from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, this is where Irma is currently uh, residing. It's across the northern parts of the state of Florida. It is clearing out of southern southwestern Florida where it brought really devastating uh, weather. And it's heading northwards up towards Georgia uh, increasingly. Uh, Jose is still sitting in the uh, tropical Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and this storm is going to be a real nuisance, really, because it's going to meander around uh, for the next week. I'll show you what the forecast is for this, but it's basically going to finish up uh, where it is uh, now. Um, and then over here, we've got this yellow X. That's a disturbance off the coast of Africa that might develop into storm or Hurricane Lee in the coming, coming few days. We'll have to uh, keep an eye on that. At the moment, it's under 40% chance of uh, becoming tropical, uh, becoming a tropical storm. Um, but it needs to be kept eye on because it is over the warm waters of the tropical Atlantic Ocean. So this is the latest uh, forecast from the National Hurricane Centre for uh, now Category 1 Hurricane Irma. So it's rapidly weakened as it's pushed northwards through the state of Florida. But Category 1 is still enough to bring storm surges, torrential rain and hurricane uh, force winds. So there's the position of uh, Irma right now in that uh, sort of western, northwestern part of the state of Florida, covering much of northern Florida with its uh, severe winds and torrential rain. The uh, model, the um, National Hurricane Centre, is forecasting this to go down to a tropical storm in the next few hours as it reaches the border with Georgia, should be down from a hurricane uh, to a storm. And then it carries on pushing north. So the state of Georgia, South Carolina, are likely to be affected later today and overnight tonight, certainly by uh, very heavy rain and strong winds as well. Also, Alabama will be affected. And then the storm pushes sort of northwestward, so it uh, goes into Alabama. That's where it's forecast to be by 2 o'clock on Tuesday. By Tuesday afternoon, it's in northern parts of Alabama, now down as a uh, depression, a tropical depression, and it pushes into the state of Tennessee as we get through into Wednesday, weakening all the time as it does so. But even as it gets into the states of Alabama and Tennessee, it will be producing uh, very heavy rain, inches of rain uh, being uh, produced by this now uh, depression, tropical depression, as it goes through into the middle part of the week. But the worst is very nearly over now uh, for Florida. Right, this is how Jose is uh, forecast to progress over the coming days. And you can see what I was talking about, but it's just going to finish up basically back where it started. So this is the position of um, now category... Uh, actually, let's just check what the category is of Jose. I think it is still a category... It's a category uh, two hurricane. So this is the position of now category two hurricane... Uh, Jose just here. It's likely to remain as a hurricane, probably going down to Category 1 in the coming days. But you see that on Tuesday, uh, Category 2 or Category 1 Hurricane Jose is just there. Uh, Wednesday, it's going back to there. Thursday, it's there. And then by Friday, I'll get rid of those uh, red lines, by Friday, it's sort of 
uh, residing here, which is basically where it is right now. So it's going to do a loop in the tropical Atlantic and finish up back where it started. By Saturday, it may be threatening the Bahamas uh, over here. But essentially, it's not going to do too much damage because it's away from those tropical island regions until the end of the week where it may start to move back towards the Bahamas. Some models are moving this after that uh, up towards the east coast of America. So we'll have to watch out what's going on with that. It looks like Jose could be a real nuisance just meandering around over the coming days. We'll keep an eye on uh, tropical uh, storm and hurricane activity, obviously. Uh, right, centering temperature from Hadley coming back to home. So the first 10 days of September have come out bang on average. We currently stand for the CT uh, up to uh, yesterday, 10th of uh, September at 14.5 degrees. An anomaly of uh, average uh, 0, 0.0. So we're bang on where you'd expect us to be in terms of a 30-year average uh, up to the 10th of September. Remember, that is provisional. And if that's set against 61 to 90, 90 an old temperature average, if we were to set that against a more modern average, it's probably been a bit colder than average, really, through the opening 10 days of September. It looks like high pressure is coming back, though, for the second half of the month. These are the 500 millibar high to anomaly flow charts from the Penn State University uh, website. We've got the uh, ECMDF here on the top, and the GFS, which have a look at in a moment, is on the Bottom 500 millibars, 8,000 feet is an area in the absolute high pressure, low pressure being moved around by a jet stream running above. Red extrapolates to uh, high pressure and blue to low pressure. So you can see what's going on uh, as we run up to the 7 to 10 day time frame with the ECDF. Quite a big reach here, generally centred a little bit to our north with a trough of low pressure through the central part of the Europe. We'll be doing something a bit like that with the flow and with the jet stream. So it is breaking us out of this unsettled pattern. We are going into a more uh, sort of settled, high pressure dominated scenario, but we might be bringing in still some rather cool sort of north easterly type uh, influences with the air. So possibly not necessarily all that warm, but certainly becoming more settled as we go into the second half of uh, September. Now, the GFS is much more centrally located with this reach. So it's the same idea as the ECM WF, but the high pressure, the above average height, centred actually through the UK and going to Scandinavia, which means we do something a bit like that with the flow with the jet stream. And we are on the warm side of the jet stream there. So that not only is a more settled scenario going into the uh, second half of September with the GFS, it's also quite a bit warmer as well. If that came off, we'd probably be thinking a bit about the second half of September being warmer than the first half of September, which is quite unusual because September is a cooling month. Uh, so normally it's warmer in the first half and cooler in the second half. But uh, that's just indications there that we might get some warmer weather in the second half of uh, September. GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles uh, next. And we're using the ensemble for Luton uh, today. So the red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average. We're going to be cooler than average over the next uh, few days. Certainly going up to the weekend, we remain under the 30-year temperature average, quite uh, substantially so, really. Uh, but as we get through to the second half of the month, and that's this period just here, we do find the upper air temperatures lifting up above average. So it looks like getting to second half of September, and we begin to get a bit of a warm-up taking place. For precipitation, uh, quite a bit of rain coming up on um, Wednesday, so Tuesday night into Wednesday. It could be a bit stormy uh, then. After that, we go towards showers, but generally it's a drier interlude coming up there into the second half of September, possibly something a little bit wetter appearing for the final week of the month. But that's a very, very long way off. And overall, it looks like the ensembles not only are warming up, but also drying out as we head into the... Uh, middle part of uh, September. Uh, have a look at the surface temperatures and air pressure. Again, this is for Luton. So we're starting off quite cool. This is 15 Celsius just here. And you can see that uh, maximum temperatures over the coming few days up to around 17th of September, which is just here, are not really getting much above uh, 15 degrees Celsius at Luton, which is cold uh, for the time of year. Certainly colder than average. But after that, we have got a warming trend appearing here for the third week of September. This period just here, we're bringing the 
temperature back up towards 20 uh, degrees, which is reasonably warm uh, for the second half of September. In fact, some of the members possibly going into the mid 20s Celsius there as you're heading towards the final week of month. That's a very long way off. Wouldn't necessarily take that particularly seriously. But certainly a bit of a warming trend is in evidence there for the third week of uh, September. And pressure recovering as well. So we're starting off down here at 990 millibars, proper low pressure at the moment. But you can see up to around the middle part of September, we are beginning to increase the pressure. By the time you get through to this third week of September, we're heading back up towards 1,030 millibars. So proper uh, a ridge of high pressure building up there as we go through into the third week of September. This third week of September is going to be significantly drier, most definitely, and probably quite a bit warmer as well. However, it doesn't do much for the next week. So temperature anomalies from the 11th to 19th of September are coming out cooler than average. Many western parts of Europe are also coming out cooler than average. It's eastern and southeastern parts of Europe that have got the warmth. That's where we've got above average temperature anomalies. Precipitation anomalies look like this. So a um, bit of a mixed bag, really. But overall, I think it's a little bit drier than average from the 11th to the 19th of September. Especially so for southern parts of the country. Though Western Europe generally, sort of France, um, low countries, Germany, Denmark, coming out a little bit on the wetter than average side. But it does look as though as we go further into the third week of September, we will probably get a drying trend. Let's pull this out and have a look at the GFS for the next uh, few days. Then. So this is how things are shaping up for Thursday when we've got a proper northerly wind blow. It's going to be very cool on Thursday with uh, a lot of heavy showers, particularly so up in the north. That northerly wind stays with us into Friday as well. Over the weekend, still generally bring quite cool air down from the north. But notice how this high pressure is getting closer and closer towards us. So as we're going towards Sunday, we're probably bringing some sort of a warm front in across the country about could be bringing a band of rain, but behind that, the air is beginning to originate from a more southerly part of the Atlantic. So very gradually, probably going to take quite a few days, but very gradually, we should start to see uh, warmer air infiltrating from the Atlantic. Then we go into next week. This takes us to Monday, the 18th of September, when the Azores High is probably starting to become established then. And running up through the middle part of next week, high pressure is in control of the weather. So it should be certainly a lot drier as we go through into next week and probably a little bit warmer as well. But one thing we have got to watch out for is that I suspect we'll bring a lot of cloud into this high pressure from off the Atlantic. So although temperatures technically will be warmer, I would have thought, next week, uh, whether we actually realise that potential, because there's probably going to be quite a lot of cloud. Uh, that's something that we'll have to firm up on. Uh, that's how we finish up on day 10, still with quite a bit of high pressure dominating, although some sort of front is plaguing the north, bringing some cloud and showery rain there. Uh, East Sydney looks like this, so northerly winds to end the week, they'll be cool and showery, that continues into weekend, and even on Sunday, uh, basically we're bringing the air around this ridge from the north or the northeast. so the weekend is likely to be quite cool, probably still fairly showery as well. Into the early part of next week, Struggling to get this Azores high built in, much more so than the GFS. Uh, so as we run to the middle part of next week, the Azores high is beginning to come in. But even then, it probably is still quite cool. Uh, it is drier. We aren't bringing in the weather system off the Atlantic. But I think even up to the middle part of next week, the ECM is uh, quite cool. Get through to the uh, day 10 chart, which is Thursday, 21st of September. High pressure is reaching through the country then, but it's trying to get towards Scandinavia, trying to uh, keep the wind in from the east. I think the uh, ECM, it's trending drier, but it isn't as warm as what we see from the GFS as we head into that 7 to uh, 10 day time frame. So, a bit of a question mark over uh, temperatures as we head into this third week of September, but we have got a trend for increasing pressure, and we have got a trend for drier weather as well for the third week of September. Just a bit of a question mark over what the temperatures are going to do. Finally, just to leave you with CFSV2 for the winter. So this is the current 700 millibar height anomaly from the CFSV2 for winter of 2017 
2018 and essentially it's still going very zonal so we've got uh low, below average heights below average pressure to the northwest of the country above average heights high pressure from the azores going into mediterranean and it leaves us with a very flat westerly flow coming across the atlantic if you know how to read these sort of charts you know what that means it means it's going to be a mild winter if a model is right that's a temperature anomaly for the winter of 2017 2018 for the uk and europe and essentially it's warmer than average across all parts so right from the far west sort of ireland and portugal far west of Europe, that we go even further back than that, we go to uh, Iceland, so right from Iceland and Ireland and Portugal in the extreme west, over to Russia, which is over there in the far northeast, and all places in between coming out with warmer than average temperature noise. That's a very mild winter being predicted by the CFS V2 winter of 2017-2018. And also much of Northern Europe coming out with a wetter than average winter as well. That's because we've got those westerlies through uh, from the Atlantic. So Southern Europe, where we've got high pressure around Spain, it does back out into the Azores uh, over here as well. So high pressure down there is keeping much of the Mediterranean average to drier than average but much of northern europe central northern europe coming out wetter than average and the reason is that the jet stream coming through the atlantic into europe bring those mild westerly southwesterly winds in but also bring in quite a few uh, bands of rain as well so a mild wet atlantic driven zonal winter still being predicted by the CFS V2. It's early days for that, so if you want something colder and more seasonable for this winter, don't necessarily be all that worried. And I'm very dubious about the fact they've going back to that temperature anomaly. That just looks uh, very over the top. You would have thought somewhere, even if it's down in the Balkans and Greece again, uh, you would have thought that somewhere in Europe you're going to get some cold weather this uh, winter. Um, so, I mean, that's just a sea of red from the far west to the far east of Europe. So all, point, all points in between. It looks a bit over the top and wrong. So, um, maybe it'll be that the cold air sinks down into the Black Sea and into Greece, Turkey and the Balkans again, something like that. But uh, I would have thought it's unlikely to be warm in all parts of Europe throughout the whole of the winter. We'll keep you posted on that, of course, and uh, actually we've got the first season one roundup for winter 2017-18 coming up a week on Sunday, where we'll get the CFSB2 and several other long-range models together and see what they're all showing for the winter. Right, I've been another extended one today, so I hope you found it interesting. Uh, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.